talking with John Goodman, who talks about what the downside of fame in print whenever I see it, and that uh, it might be fun for you to go to a town where nobody knows you once again. <laughs> there was some sort of sad thing where you, I know you're great fondness for New Orleans and you went into one of the places with some friends and got mobbed by drunks and had to escape in a cab and realized that you've given up part of your life. The, the night after I got married, uh, we were supposed to meet some friends at uh, Pat O'Brien's, it's a great patio bar, and which is the, the sole purpose of the place is to getting hammered. Mm -hmm. But we uh, went in to meet some friends and it was, I, was, I was scared to death. Uh, it took us about 15 minutes to make our way through and then everybody turned. And to get out, it, it <laughs> required some uh, Jim Brown style moves, but I, I was scared to death. Genuinely scared. Yeah, I was. What was I, the menace I, coming from? Uh, just uh, um, hundreds of, of drunks. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing you can do about that, is there? And you know, a lot of people hearing it say, oh, yeah, I'm sure he hates it. I, 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 he should be in my shoes. It's, know, uh, especially it's hard to explain. So, <laughs> it's hard to explain, so I try not to to talk about it much, mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's pretty uncomfortable losing your anonymity. Do you suppose if there were a little town in North Dakota, and we know there is, <laughs> uh, but I mean if there were one where they have never seen TV or movies, and you could send actors there for a little R&R, &R, no one would know who the hell they were. They, they, they'd get bored of it. They, they would say to Robert Redford, Na I didn't catch your name. <laughs> How many actors do you think could stand it for more than two days? <laughs> Where am I? I said with Bob Hope. Chop, went chop. To, yeah, <laughs> here's some of my pictures. And he, Bob Hope went to Russia and he said he got very antsy, he admitted, after uh, to walk down the street and not have people turn. Spooked him. <laughs> you know, on the back and he's of not easily spooked. Not Hope. Tracy. Vanity Fair excerpted a chapter from a new book on Hepburn. I didn't want to read another book on Hepburn, mm. yeah. uh, just because you, you know, there's so many and they never really get on. This thing is horrifying. Did you know how awfully sick, drunken, squalid, haunted Spencer Tracy was? Um, just, uh, just the, the rumors, the common stories that I've mm -hmm. heard. I didn't know. Uh, and the heroic job she did of trying to save him. And, uh, she used to come in when he was on a bender and try to clean him up a bit and mm -hmm. let him go on until he you know, ran its course. If the book is true, and it, it, isn't, it isn't one of those squalid, you know, tabby books, but that people would be amazed to find her sleeping outside his door mm -hmm. in the Beverly Hills Hotel, tying it to a suicide of her brother early in her life and not knowing if what Spencer might do in there, she was ready. Uh. It's scary. And it, you know, how many actors are only in control of their life, or performers, when they're doing what they do? It do bring focus, but yeah. uh, I... When you said his acting was seamless, uh, his life certainly was, it just... No. You feel so sorry for him. It's a, yeah, the tortured, poor tortured bastard. Could you have gone wrong if you hadn't met a nice woman? Uh, yeah. Is it <laughs> say I'm still that? open for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was, uh... And, well, I just like to go out and have fun mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, you started talking about that once, and you said, I think I, maybe I should protect myself a little here. Yeah. Well, Why I, did the tabloids suddenly come down on you? The way oh, I don't know, but they knock marble. They've left me alone for a while, so. Um, they would have. Lots of letting sleeping dogs lie. I think I'll kick the crap out of them. They uh, I don't know, but they, the, to my credit, they've never printed anything true about me. Yeah, uh, so, you know, that so I got out. yeah, I'm I'm covered. <laughs> what, what if they started that? What Sally Field called you a big sexy man with the soul of a puppy. <laughs> Did you sue her for this? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll fix her. Uh, Robert Wagner said he used to stand in the shadows and watch Cary Grant act. And that Grant came off set one day and said, "I just learned something." What? <laughs> he said, "How to breathe." He said, I noticed in movies, you always hold your breath while the other person is talking. You know, of course, you don't do that in life. No. And this was this revelation to Cary Grant that he could, if he breathed, it made him better in the scene. Do you, have, do you, do you learn things like All this? All the time, and, and, yeah. Um, I usually actually try not to breathe, uh, but we have, you know, depending on where the microphone is, because it, 
it can cover the other person's dialogue. Uh -huh. Can you learn from working with Roseanne? She's such a Absolutely. master comedian. Uh, timing, um, outrageousness, uh, and she as well uh, now is is seamless. Mm -hmm. People who can't stand her for whatever other reasons, I think performers all admit how fine her work is, don't they? She, and we have such a damn fine time. I mean, they're, I should pay them to go to work. Of course, of course yeah. I won't. But we, 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 we do have a ball. You might be listening. Oh, you said another f really funny thing. <clears throat> Somebody asked you the obligatory question about nude scenes, and you said, who wants to see me rolling around naked? I would like to meet that person. <laughs> well, we have her here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm on another one of my uh, yearly diets. Drop 60, gain 70. It's, it's good for the fast It's dangerous it to go it. up and down. Yes, it's, it is. I'm planning on not coming back up again. You, you, you said that Roseanne and Tom, what, uh, you, you had a pact and two of them stayed on the diet and you were the dropout? What? Yeah, uh, well, Tom noticed that whenever Rose would get thin, I'd get fat. Whenever I'd get thin, Rosie would bulk up. <laughs> so you can never get on a, a seesaw no, again. we'll never be on a keel.